Ryan Tinetti, in his insightful essay, explores the critical issue of effective communication in preaching, particularly addressing the challenges preachers face due to the curse of knowledge. This concept, initially introduced by Chip and Dan Heath in their book Made to Stick, emphasizes a common predicament. Experts in a field often struggle to convey their knowledge to those less informed because they find it hard to empathize with the latter's lack of understanding. Tinetti, drawing inspiration from Jesus' parable of the sower, accentuates the importance of understanding in the preaching of the gospel. He argues that the ability of the sermon to resonate and be fruitful is not merely an added luxury, but an essential component of the preacher's commission. However, the depth of theological knowledge and pastoral expertise that qualifies individuals for preaching can paradoxically act as a barrier to effective communication with their congregations. This disconnect is exemplified in Tinetti's own ministerial experiences, where he encountered feedback indicating that his congregation sometimes found his sermons confusing or disconnected from their understanding. To address this issue, Tinetti proposes a detailed exploration of the curse of knowledge, specifically focusing on its impact on preachers. He suggests that a deeper understanding of this phenomenon can help preachers identify and overcome the barriers to effective communication. Furthermore, he reviews relevant literature from the social sciences to uncover practices that could assist preachers in reversing the curse. This involves finding ways to simplify complex theological concepts without diluting their essence, ensuring that the life-giving message of the gospel is accessible and relatable to the average churchgoer. Tinetti concludes his essay with theological reflections, affirming the significance of clarity and relatability in preaching. His approach suggests a need for a balance between theological depth and communicative simplicity, ensuring that the powerful message of the gospel is both understood and felt by the congregation. Also, Tinetti delves into a critical reassessment of the commonly held belief that accumulating knowledge is invariably beneficial. This perspective is deeply embedded in contemporary society, advocating the relentless pursuit of more, be it wealth, status, or knowledge. While Christians might critique the materialistic aspects of this belief, the pursuit of knowledge often escapes scrutiny. This is reinforced by scriptural references, like Hosea 4.6 and Mark 12.30, which seem to endorse the relentless quest for knowledge. However, Tinetti introduces a compelling counterpoint to this belief by referencing interdisciplinary research. In their influential paper, Economists Colin Kammerer, George Lowenstein, and Martin Weber discuss the curse of knowledge, asserting a paradox where increased knowledge can impair decision-making. This concept suggests that having more information often hinders one's ability to empathize or accurately judge others' perspectives. This phenomenon is critical, especially in economic settings, where decision-making is paramount. Tinetti brings this concept closer to home through his observations of his children. His older kids, proficient in reading, struggle to empathize with their younger siblings who are still learning. This impatience and lack of understanding among the siblings epitomize the curse of knowledge. It shows how advancing in knowledge can make it challenging to remember or relate to a less informed standpoint. The essay extends this concept beyond childhood, with psychologist Susan Birch indicating that adults are equally vulnerable to this curse. Knowledge can inadvertently cloud our ability to accurately interpret others' beliefs or actions. Harvard biologist Steven Pinker highlights the curse's insidious nature. It's a self-concealing issue, akin to a drunk person unaware of their incapacity. This analogy indicates the difficulty in recognizing and overcoming the limitations imposed by our own knowledge. In essence, Understanding the curse of knowledge confronts the traditional view that more knowledge is invariably good. It proposes that while acquiring knowledge is valuable, its accumulation can also hinder empathy and effective communication, affecting both children and adults. Moreover, Tinetti dives into the communication challenges faced by preachers, framed through the concept of the curse of knowledge— this term refers to a situation where an individual's deep expertise in a subject impedes their ability to effectively communicate it to those with less knowledge. Tinetti contends that while this is a common issue across various fields, 
it is particularly acute for preachers due to the nature of their work. Drawing on the insights from Chip and Dan Heath's Made to Stick, Tinetti outlines the two stages of communication, the answer stage, involving the gathering of information and expertise, and the telling others stage, where this knowledge is shared with others. The curse of knowledge arises when experts, in this case, preachers, forget the experience of not knowing what they now know, leading to a disconnect in communication. Tinetti maintains two main symptoms of this curse in the context of preaching. The first is the use of specialized Christian or denominational jargon without providing definitions, making the sermon inaccessible to those not versed in this language. This issue often originates in seminary training and is perpetuated in the professional environment of pastors. The second symptom is referencing the Bible without proper context or attribution, assuming a level of scriptural knowledge that the congregation may not possess. This communication gap is particularly problematic for preachers, whose primary role involves explaining complex theological concepts in an understandable way. By identifying these issues, Tinetti points out the need for preachers to be more aware of their audience's knowledge level and to adapt their communication accordingly. The essay serves as a call to action for preachers to recognize and address the curse of knowledge in their ministry, paving the way for more effective and inclusive communication of their message. Furthermore, Tinetti addresses a significant challenge in preaching, the curse of knowledge. This term describes the difficulty experts have in imagining the perspective of a novice, leading to communication gaps. Tinetti acknowledges that while it's impossible to completely reverse this curse, strategies can be employed to make sermons more understandable and engaging for congregations. Central to Tinetti's approach is the concept of sitting in the pew, urging preachers to adopt the perspective of their listeners. He suggests a literal interpretation of this advice by recommending that preachers physically sit in the pews and read the upcoming Sunday's scripture in the same translation used by the congregation. This exercise is meant to replicate the experience of the congregation, offering preachers a fresh, uncluttered perspective before they dig into deeper theological analysis. By doing this, preachers can note their initial reactions and questions about the text, which are likely to resonate with the congregation's experiences. In addition, Tinetti proposes a metaphorical interpretation of sitting in the pew. He cites Pamela Hines' research methodology for gathering accurate data, which reiterates direct engagement with novices. In the context of preaching, this translates to using modern tools like social media to interact with the congregation. Preachers can post key verses or thematic images related to upcoming sermons on platforms like Facebook and Instagram, inviting comments and questions. This direct engagement provides valuable insights for sermon preparation, allowing preachers to address the specific needs and curiosities of their audience. Overall, Tinetti's recommendations focus on bridging the gap between the preacher's extensive knowledge and the congregation's perspective. By empathetically engaging with the congregation's viewpoint, preachers can craft sermons that are more accessible, relevant, and impactful, thereby enhancing the overall effectiveness of their preaching. Further, Tinetti tackles the complex issue of effective communication, particularly in the realm of preaching. The primary argument revolves around the misconception that simplifying messages equates to making them superficial or less meaningful. Tinetti challenges this notion, advocating instead for the use of a universal language that can bridge the communication gap between complex ideas and a diverse audience. The narrative begins with an anecdote about a firm divided between engineers and manufacturers. The engineers, who designed intricate machinery for silicon chip production, communicated in highly abstract terms, while the manufacturers focused on the tangible aspects of machine construction. This difference in communication styles led to a disconnect until the engineers adapted their language to be more physical and concrete, a common ground for both groups. Drawing a parallel to this scenario, Tinetti compares preachers to the engineers in the firm. He suggests that preachers, armed with theological knowledge and insights, often struggle to convey these concepts to their congregations, who are more attuned to the tangible realities of everyday life. The solution, according to Tinetti, 
is not to dilute theological messages, but to translate them into the universal language of concrete experiences that are accessible and relatable. Tinetti repeats the power of concrete language, which appeals directly to the senses and forms the foundation of effective analogies, metaphors, and storytelling. These methods, deeply rooted in lived experiences, help in making abstract theological concepts more tangible and comprehensible. He cites Daniel Overdorf's One Year to Better Preaching, which provides practical exercises for preachers. These include learning from skilled storytellers and experimenting with multisensory preaching techniques that utilize visual aids, physical objects, and even sense to enhance the impact and retention of sermons. In sum, Tinetti's Speak a Universal Language advocates for a communication strategy in preaching that is deeply embedded in concrete experiences and sensory engagement. This approach enables preachers to convey complex theological ideas in ways that are both accessible and engaging to a broader audience. Besides, Tinetti addresses a common issue known as the curse of knowledge that befalls preachers, manifesting in sermons peppered with scriptural references that lack sufficient context, potentially leaving congregations confused. To counter this, Tinetti offers two key solutions to enhance biblical literacy among churchgoers, drawing from insights in an article by Ed Stetzer. Stetzer's first recommendation, as underlined by Tinetti, urges pastors to inspire their congregants to view the Bible not as a disconnected anthology of stories, but as a single cohesive narrative. This perception shift is crucial for developing a deeper understanding of Scripture. It encourages church members to read and interpret biblical texts in light of one grand storyline of salvation and God's engagement with the world. Tinetti sees the church year, an annual cycle of seasons and holy days commemorating the life of Jesus and the history of salvation, as an invaluable tool in achieving this. By consistently connecting weekly scripture readings to this broader narrative in sermons, blog posts, newsletter content, and other congregational communication, pastors can immerse their parishioners in the biblical saga in a way that is both approachable and illuminating. Tinetti then underscores Stetzer's second solution, which involves the creation of a practical Bible reading plan tailored for individual or congregational implementation. A structured approach is essential for sustaining engagement with the scriptures and ensuring consistent spiritual growth. Tinetti emphasizes a tendency among worshipers to favor devotional materials over direct scripture engagement, often due to the lack of a clear reading strategy. To this end, he proposes leveraging resources already present within the Lutheran tradition, primarily the daily lectionary from the Lutheran service book. This lectionary prescribes a yearly reading regime that encompasses the complete New Testament and a substantial portion of the Old Testament. By encouraging adherence to this schedule and offering supportive materials such as complementary Bibles and easily accessible weekly readings, congregations can solidify their scriptural foundation. This not only empowers the laity with a richer biblical knowledge base, but also supports preachers in curating sermons that are both informative and relatable, thereby circumventing the curse of knowledge. Additionally, Tinetti confronts an issue that plagues even the most seasoned preachers, the curse of knowledge, where the speaker assumes listeners understand the subject to the same depth as the speaker, leading to miscommunication and disengagement. To remedy this, Tinetti debates for the critical importance of soliciting and receiving post-sermon feedback, a practice essential for enhancing the clarity and impact of spiritual messages. Tinetti borrows insights from Steven Pinker, who suggests showing drafts to an audience similar to the target to ascertain comprehension, and from Pamela Hines, who recommends involving intermediaries. In this context, congregants who lie between novices and experts to predict novice performance. Intermediaries are key in assessing whether the message delivers the intended clarity, as they can offer perspectives representative of different levels within the church audience. To obtain this feedback effectively, Tinetti proposes involving formal church leaders like the Board of Elders, or tapping into seasoned saints, congregants who might not possess formal theological education, but whose rich experience of faith makes them insightful reviewers of sermons. By engaging these intermediaries, Preachers can ask pointed questions to diagnose and address communicative shortcomings influenced by the curse of knowledge. 
For instance, feedback forms might inquire if the sermon's language is intelligible, if the progression of ideas is clear, and if members would feel comfortable inviting an outsider to listen. This feedback loop is essential because it moves beyond cursory compliments to provide critical insights that propel ongoing improvement in preaching. It parallels the continuous learning and development seen in athletes who, after their initial training, still seek out coaching to refine their techniques and performance. By advocating for persistent and systematic evaluation after preaching, Tinetti accentuates the idea that improvement does not end with formal education. Rather, it is a lifelong process supported by community input. Without this commitment to feedback and adaptability, preachers risk allowing the curse of knowledge to limit sermon accessibility and effectiveness. To ensure messages resonate and fulfill their spiritual intent, it is crucial that preachers close the loop and engage with the perspectives of their listeners. Last but not least, Tinetti examines the theological implications of the curse of knowledge, a concept largely discussed in social sciences, but with potent applications within theology, particularly regarding the interpretation of sin and human nature. Tinetti observes, that there has been little sustained theological discussion on the topic, despite its ingrained presence in biblical narratives and its relevance to pastoral work. Tinetti begins his reflection by referencing the fall in Genesis, affirming that the original curse, stemming from the consumption of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, results primarily in death and separation from God. He asserts a consequential secondary aspect of the curse, which is the introspective turn humanity takes upon gaining knowledge, a condition symbolically represented in Adam and Eve's sudden awareness of their nakedness and rush to cover themselves. This act reflects a spiritual curvature described as incurvatus in se, an inward turn of the soul towards itself, a concept articulated by Augustine. To illustrate this inward turn, Tinetti refers to Augustine's introspection of infantile behavior in his Confessions, where the natural human tendency to focus selfishly on personal desires is evident even in a baby's irrational jealousy and anger. These early signs of inward curvature confirm the biblical assertion of a sinful nature from birth, aligning with the idea that humans are inherently self-centered due to original sin. Also, Tinetti proposes that the curse of knowledge, which inhibits an individual's capacity to comprehend ignorance in others, once they themselves possess certain information, is an extension of this sinful, self-absorbed state. This particular manifestation becomes critically relevant for preachers who, in their endeavor to bridge the divine-human divide, may inadvertently display the curse by presuming parishioners' understanding aligns with their own specialized theological insights. Acknowledging the complex challenge this curse presents for preachers, Tinetti suggests that spiritual victory over such an obstacle necessitates divine intervention. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate exorcist of this demon of misunderstanding, yet preachers must actively collaborate with the Spirit. Only by intentional and Spirit-aware preaching can they hope to mitigate the effects of the curse of knowledge, thus facilitating clearer communication of the gospel and fostering deeper connections with their congregations. In conclusion, Tinetti addresses the challenge of the curse of knowledge in the context of preaching. As explored in Chip and Dan Heath's Made to Stick, this curse refers to the difficulty that knowledgeable individuals, such as preachers, encounter when communicating with less informed audiences. Tinetti highlights that this issue is particularly pertinent for preachers, who must find ways to translate complex theological knowledge into language that resonates with their congregations. Moreover, Tinetti reflects on personal experiences where his congregation found his sermons confusing. Recognizing this, he encourages preachers to explore the social sciences to uncover strategies that can reverse the curse. These include avoiding specialized jargon, contextualizing biblical references, and employing narrative techniques that present the Bible as a unified story. This approach can enhance biblical literacy among churchgoers, making the message more understandable and engaging. Furthermore, understanding the audience is vital. Thus, Tinetti suggests that preachers metaphorically sit in the pew to grasp the perspective of their listeners. 
by physically sitting in church seats and reading Sunday scripture as a congregant might, preachers can better relate to the initial questions and reactions that arise. Additionally, he promotes the utilization of social media to elicit dialogue and feedback from congregants, to inform sermon preparation, and ensure relevance to the congregation's needs. In addition, Tinetti proposes the importance of gathering candid feedback after delivering sermons. Intermediary church members, neither novices nor experts, can offer valuable insights into the sermon's clarity and suggest areas for improvement. Just as athletes continue to refine their techniques through coaching, pastors are encouraged to seek constructive critique to hone their preaching. Lastly, theologically, Tinetti connects the curse of knowledge to the concept of sin, specifically the self-centered nature of humanity since the fall depicted in Genesis. He disputes that effective preaching and overcoming this inward self-focus necessitates divine intervention via the Holy Spirit. By partnering with the Spirit, preachers can better counter these innate communication barriers, thereby delivering the gospel with enhanced clarity and forging deeper connections with their congregations.